All right, all right, I get it, all right. I know what I've got to do. So as many of you have made it very clear, Black Ops 4 was absent from the every Easter egg in 24 hours video. So here at Team Detective HQ, you know, we got busy. And now for days, me and the one and only Tyler the Tomato were up until the crack of dawn learning all of the Black Ops 4 Easter eggs. Yep, including this one, and um, yep, in including that one as well. And we were putting in an actual shift in order to learn and master all of these maps. So boys and lads, it is finally my pleasure to bring you Can You Be Every Black Ops 4 Easter Egg in 12 hours. We have 8 maps this time around and these easter eggs are regarded as some of the worst in the entire franchise. Black Ops 4 as a whole isn't very well received by the zombies community so it'll be interesting to see how I feel after reliving it again on PC, you know, not an actual jet engine of a console. But yeah, for this one it was just me and Tyler as we were on a time crunch to get this done so you won't be seeing our main man Matt die about 300 times in this video. Also, for the record, we did allow ourselves to use elixirs and talismans as this made our lives just easier and since we were still kind of amateurs at this game, it just made it a lot more tolerable. But yeah, once we were ready, we prepared for a long night as we jumped into our very first map. Before we even started our first map, we were already dreading what was ahead. This is because our first map was Voyage of Despair. Now, Voyage of Despair is probably known as one of the worst maps in Call of Duty Zombies history. I mean, the proof is in this data that MC Sports Talk gathered a while ago. So if I see any comments saying that Voyage is their favourite map, like I've seen for Transit, right, then you're just lying to yourself. Anyways, as standard for any map, the first thing we got to work on was turning on the power. Now, in the Chaos maps, it's known as the Sentinel Artifact. Turning on the Sentinel Artifact opens up more of the map and also sets us onto our first step of the Easter egg, which is the activate pack a punch now this is actually relatively simple as all you have to do is just activate four pedestals around the map and then this will allow us to access the pack a punch machine i mean so far all right we've done the basics right it's been relatively simple and quite easy to explain but then we get on to the next step. Like, honestly, even I get confused here. For this next step, we need to go to different spots around the map, and then in these spots, there might be a chance for a symbol to appear. And then, you know, if we do find a symbol, then we need to go around and look for a clock in that respective area and take note of what time is on it. We also need to take note of what type of symbol is shown, as there are four different symbols that it could be, these being fire, water, air, and earth. You'd honestly think I'm the last airbender, but this whole process needs to be repeated until you have four different symbols with four different times. And now we need this for the next step. So for this step, we need to go all the way to the captain's wheel and now each of these wheels will have a different symbol and then you've got to turn the little dial on each symbol to either the hour or the minute depending on which one you're doing and then you've got to go all the way to the sentinel artifact and change the two dials that are there as well with the left symbol needing to be tuned to the time we had for air and the right dial needing to be tuned to the time of earth but we're not quite done just yet boys there were two more dials down in the engine room and we've got to do the same thing where we tune the times to the right symbols with the top dial being water and the bottom dial being fire now i 100 probably butchered that explanation because this step is just so confusing for me all right i just left it up to tyler to input all of the dials as this was just literally frying my brain but after we entered in the final time it, it didn't work yeah we don't really know what went wrong here so we did spend a good few minutes trying to figure out where we went wrong but eventually we realized one of the times hadn't been set correctly and after fixing it we finally had this step finished around 16 minutes into the run while we're in the process of completing the last step we also got set up and used our fire sails to get the guns that we wanted such as the kraken and the best weapon in this game without a doubt is the helion salvo I i'm gonna be honest this gun is a little bit too op it's literally better than like majority of the wonder weapons in this game so in my eyes right this is the wonder weapon of the game all right and anything else that you get out of the box is just made completely redundant because of it. Anyways, finally going on to our next step, where we had to look around the map for small little outlets that have an elemental effect coming out of them. After we found where all of these outlets were, we then had to kill the corresponding elemental zombie in front of it, and if done correctly, a ritual symbol will appear on the floor which will then be used in a later step. And now we have to do this until we have all four of the outlets completed, and now this step can be a massive pain in the ass, right? as sometimes the elemental zombie that you actually need just doesn't spawn, and when you do get an elemental zombie that you do need, it's going to be on the other side of the map, alright? Guaranteed. Meaning I'll have to lead the elemental zombie all the way to where the outlet is and now some of these elemental zombies actually make this extremely hard right for example the fire elemental will explode if you get too close to it and this becomes an issue when you realize that some of the outlets are in very close quartered areas so yeah this step can be a pain but we managed to complete it by the 27 minute mark and now as i said ritual symbols will appear in front of the outlets and after interacting with these it will begin a challenge now you need to do these challenges in a certain order so the first challenge you'll do is the acid outlet the second is the water outlet the third is the electric outlet and then the final one is the fire outlet now i was originally going to talk about each of these challenges and the struggles that might come with them but my god all right the helion salvo just made us an absolute cakewalk I, I mean just look at this gameplay all right like i could have just taken a nap to be honest get some extra z's before attempting the rest of the easter eggs like the helion salvo just made these challenges so easy but yeah anyways we completed the final challenge by the 33 minute mark and we could move on to the next step so something that we actually needed for this next step which i haven't mentioned yet was that we needed to collect parts from around the map so we could upgrade the kraken at the upgrade table in the engine room and look all right team detective we don't waste any time okay so we did 
did this behind the scenes alright in the background of the other steps. So once we had it built I killed an acid elemental zombie specifically so we could pick up its core and use that to upgrade the kraken into the acid variant. Now that we have this version of the kraken we can go on to the next step. For this step there is 9 pipes that we need to shoot with this upgraded kraken and once we shot this last one here the room would flood with water and after going on to the next round the pack a punch would spawn in that location. And then after all of that we could then pack a punch the sentinel artifact. Now why we needed to flood the room just to pack a punch the sentinel artifact is beyond me but that's just how Treyarch designed it I guess so it is what it is. Either way now that we had the pack a punch sentinel artifact we could start collecting the planets around the map. Now essentially there's 9 different symbols around the entire map so I won't bore you with all the locations but all you need to know is that me and Tyler had collected every single symbol by the 38 minute mark. So far we only have a few steps left to go before this easter egg was done and honestly we we're making really good time like obviously not world record pace or anything like that but for us not even knowing our way around the map a few days before recording this I, I was genuinely impressed with our time all right so you know gold star for us anyways we were now onto the planet step and this one will take a little bit of explaining essentially to start the step we needed to go to the cargo room and look at this planet diagram and once we had interacted with it the planets would begin to glow in a very certain order and we need to keep note of this so that we could shoot the planets in this order the planets on the diagram do flash pretty quickly so we utilized the pause game feature which meant we could pause the game after each planet which gave us time to note it down and make sure we definitely had the correct order. We then needed to go back up to the top of the ship and shoot the planets in the order it had given to us. And now for this next part, okay, we need to be quick, okay, because after shooting a planet, an orb will fly down onto the map somewhere and we need to pick it up before it disappears. So the plan was simple, okay, Tyler was going to shoot the planets and I was going to be the one who ran around the entire map picking up the orbs that fly into it. This step was definitely not easy and had been shown to be a frequent problem for us in our past few attempts. But with us literally sweating out BO4 all week, we were very familiar with this step, so we managed to come complete this easy enough. After shooting the very final planet, the orb that drops will require all players in the game to interact with it and this will put us onto our next step. For this next step, we needed to break the ice that has now appeared around the ship until we had made our way back to the poop deck. Don't laugh at that. Alright, I see you smiling a little bit, okay? It's not that funny. And now this step, as long as you know what you're doing, it's actually pretty easy, especially with two players, as I would focus on destroying the ice while Tyler just defended me. And with the addition of the Kraken and the specialist weapon, this just made this super easy, okay? It was an actual cakewalk. So with that, we destroyed the final piece of ice around the 52 minute mark, and with that, a ritual symbol appears on the floor, which means we are now at the boss fight. So me and Tyler, we wasted no time, and we interacted with the ritual symbol on the floor, and after a quick cutscene, we were teleported back to the poop deck, again, don't laugh, where we now had to fight the massive eyeball that appeared. This boss fight can be split into 5 stages with each stage taking place in a different part of the ship. As mentioned we start at the poop deck and this stage is simple enough ok, all we had to do was not die to the elementals and the blight fathers and after killing enough we would then move on to the next stage which is in the engine room. And now boys you're not going to believe what I'm about to say about this next stage right, it's literally just the same thing. One thing I really dislike about this boss fight is just how slow it goes by ok, like the majority of it is just killing basic enemies until you move on to the next stage which I personally don't like. So so what felt like forever we were finally finished up with the engine room stage and would then move on to the stage where we'd actually fight the boss. We were teleported to the state rooms where essentially whenever the eye shoots a laser beam down the hallway we can shoot him back with our guns, which in my case was the Helion Salvo and this made this step light work ok, we had it done relatively quick. Then onto the promenade stage ok, this is where it started to get a bit more difficult as the zombies would start coming from all directions and while trying to shoot the eye it could become very overwhelming. Now one thing I haven't mentioned but has been very useful throughout this run is that we both got the homunculus which if you don't know just actually exactly like a monkey bomb and this allowed us just to focus fire in the eyeball getting us off this step pretty quickly as well. So far this boss fight has actually been going okay but we were now onto the final stage which has us back onto the poop deck. Seriously, stop laughing at that. This is more or less the same as the last two stages, except this stage has something very unique that can be a run killer. Quite literally. The eyeball gains a new attack on this stage where it will charge up an attack and if we don't do enough damage to it in a certain amount of time, it will literally one shot your entire team. Needless to say, when we heard him start using that attack, alright, we started shitting bricks, okay? It genuinely filled us with fear knowing that everything we worked hard to achieve could be gone in seconds. But this is Team Detective, okay? We always pull through and that's exactly what we did, alright? It was a tough battle, but eventually after shooting the eye, we enough helion salvo shots the eye went down and that marked the end of the boss fight. So as the cutscene played we could finally take our first map off the list and was generally surprised in how fast we got this easter egg done. We were really hoping for sub 1 hour but honestly 1 hour 10 minutes I'll take it. So far so good but we didn't stop there as we wasted no time and jumped straight onto our next map.
Up next is probably the most liked Black Ops 4 map by the community, this being 9. Now, this was one of the maps I was actually quite confident in as I had beat this many times before, mainly because it's actually quite a fun easter egg. So, starting up this easter egg, our first priority was getting Pack-a-Punch open. Now, to do this, we need to go to each one of the God's Temple areas and we need to complete the challenge that was inside. This was simple enough as all you really have to do is just kill a few gladiators and some tigers and collect their heads. While we were doing this, we were also doing the banner trials on the map where you can actually get yourself a free Pack-a-Punch strife which helped massively. Once we had completed the champion challenges, we went down to the temple and we stuck the heads on these spikes and with that pack a bunch was now open. Now also during this time we got the hit in the box which allowed me to get the wonder weapon aka the helion salvo. I mean, we also got this like Death of Orion or whatever, but now us getting the Death of Orion was actually quite good as we needed it for the next step. Essentially, we had to start collecting ingredients that we could combine to make a compound, which is then used in a later step. So one of these ingredients actually required us to find a skull in the temple and then use our specialist to knock it down. I mean, and I mean, like, come on, like this shouldn't be too hard. I mean, how many schools are just randomly lying in the temple? So yeah, right, this seems a bit confusing at first, but don't worry, right, the game is super generous and it put a symbol on the school we actually need to get. So once I had found it, I used my specialist weapon on it and it knocked it off the wall and after picking it up, I took it to this grinder and I put the skull inside it and after shooting it a few times with a Death of Orion, it turned it into dust. Now, the one thing I don't really understand about this step is like, why did it have to be this specific school? Like, it literally could have been any school with the temple or just, you know, anywhere else in the map. You know, I am just like completely nitpicking here, but like, why does it have to be like this? But yeah, right, with the school just collected, we now had a few more things that we needed to collect. One of these was shit. No, I mean like literal dookie poo poo stinky shit. Like, I I'm not even trying to be funny. Like, this is genuinely something you need for the Easter egg. So, the way you get this is by having incredibly bad affinity, which can be tracked right here. And then, once you have the fun pointing downwards, you need to return back up to the main arena, and eventually, the crowd will throw the most spicy poo poo at you. And then, all you gotta do from there is just go ahead and pick it up. Now, I don't have gameplay as this, as I wasn't the one doing it. While I was getting the skull and the next ingredient we're gonna talk about, Tyler was out here taking one for the team and getting literal poo poo thrown at him. What an absolute king. Either way, with the poop in hand, we now had to get ourselves a piece of wood. And clearly, alright, in this map, right, like, wood is just completely absent, except for, like, one place. In the spawn arena, there's, like, these wood pylons, which if a gladiator throws his axe at, it will cause a piece of wood to fall off, and after picking it up, we need to make our way all the way down to the Odin Tower and put this wood into the fire here. And then, after waiting three rounds, we could pick it up, and then this would give us our very final ingredient. So, with all three of our ingredients in hand, we now had to mix them all together and create a fertilizer. So, to do this, we had to go down to the Zeus Tower, where there's this random bowl, which will allow us to mix the fertilizer together. And then, after waiting two rounds, we returned back to the bowl, where we could now pick it back up. Now with this fertilizer we had to go to the Danu statue and place it down in between these two trees. Then we need to wait another three rounds until it starts getting all stinky. Now while we wait for this step to do its thing I just want to say how much I hate steps that require you to wait a bunch of rounds for just no reason. Like this was an unnecessary amount of rounds to wait for basically nothing. Like this whole segment of this easter egg has required us to wait seven rounds just to get all of the parts which is really annoying. But either way when the poop starts getting stinky like this we were then ready to move on to the next step. So what we needed to do now was that we needed to get firebomb on our weapon. In our game, I got it on the Helion Salvo, and you just need to kill a zombie with Firebomb when it's on top of the stinky poo. Doing this correctly will cause a symbol to appear on the ground, which will let us go into our very first trial. So, I'm not entirely sure how you're meant to enter the Danu trial, like, I thought you just had to hold the interact button, but then sometimes it works when you pull out the specialist, so we just did that, and we started swinging it around, and somehow it worked. Honestly, I I'm just as confused as you are. Anyways, we were now onto the first trial, so what do we actually have to do? Well, it's actually quite simple, right? All you have to do is just shoot the red spores with the Helion Salvo until it's over, and I'd love to go into more detail about it, but that's literally all there is. You start at the bottom of the Danu Tower and then you gotta make your way up to the top of the Danu Tower while destroying the red spore on each level. And as I said, the Helion Salvo just makes it dummy easy and since we got homunculuses as well, we would just throw those and that allowed us to focus all of our fire on destroying the spores. So yeah, right, it was super easy. Honestly, the hardest part about this trial was just trying to get into it. So returning back to the actual map now, we needed to get ourselves the shield and then look for four bull symbols around the map and then shoot them with the shield. Now these symbols appear literally anywhere, including outside the map. And now luckily I managed to find these extremely quickly as they were in some of the most common spots. And now I say I found them as Tyler had literally no idea what he was looking for, but it's alright, okay? I'm pretty sure he was still crying after he got shit thrown at him, but after shooting one of the bull symbols, a gladiator will spawn in, and after killing them, their souls will go into the pillar in the Ra temple, and after collecting all four, we could then go on to the Ra trial. So, I should probably explain what you need to do to complete this trial. Essentially, there are symbols that correlate to a certain zombie type, and now on this pillar, these symbols will appear in a certain order, and we need to kill these zombies in this order. And after doing it twice, we would complete this step. You know, pretty easy, so how did it go for us? I Oh, I killed a water. I'm so sorry. Okay, we did fail this the first time around as Tyler accidentally killed the wrong zombie, but honestly, I'm not even a sweat for Dean Detective, right? We just move on. Okay, you know, second try, here we go, right? Our tactic was pretty simple. I'd remember the first two symbols and Tyler remember the last two symbols. This meant that we could 100% remember all the symbols and not worry about forgetting it. So the order we got was Gladiator, Water, Poison, and then finally Fire. And then after killing them in that order, the next four symbols appeared. This time, we had to kill the zombies in this order. Gladiator, Fire, Electric, and then finally Water. After killing the final zombie, we had filled up the 
for our pillar and we were finished with this step. Not too bad honestly, it could have been worse, but luckily we had good communication and we got it through on our second try. Next up we had to find 4 screws in the underground area which was easy enough, especially with the Helion Salvo as this pretty much instantly finishes them. You know, the Helion Salvo really just solves a lot of these easter egg steps. Anyways, after finding the last screw, 4 electric orbs will appear in the spawn room and now we need to get kills using Kilowatt to fill these up. Now the easiest way we found to do this was just to kill gladiators and brawlers with the Helion Salvo as this will count as a bunch of souls and fill them up after only 2 gladiators or brawlers. And with me and Tyler both doing this, we completed all 4 orbs pretty fast. So with all 4 orbs filled, we were able to interact with the pedestal in the middle of the arena and start the onslaught step. For this step, we were given our specialist weapons and whenever we got a kill with it, it would recharge the specialist weapon back to full. Essentially giving us an unlimited specialist weapon and now you'd think this would be super useful and in a way like quite OP, but I'll be honest, the specialist weapon is actual hot cheeks against these enemies since there's so many of them, so you know, we just use the best weapon in the game, the Helion Salvo, to kill all of them as it literally one-shots all gladiators and brawlers. I I'm so glad that this game is balanced. So yeah, alright, we pulled out the Helion Salvo and this was piss easy, right? We completed this really quickly. Now, I won't lie, we're actually coming up to the end of this easter egg. For this next step, we need to look for these blue symbols in the underground area and you'll notice that when we shoot them with the Death of Orion, they glow up. There are six symbols underground and what we need to do is we need to line up a shot that perfectly hits two of them in one shot. It sounds easy, but the precision you need in order to shoot these shots are like pixel perfect, I swear. So we got the first two easy enough, but it was this last shot here that was the annoying one. We were using all of our ammo on this one shot and it just was not hitting, right? But eventually, after a lot of shots, we managed to hit it. We were now onto the final step before the boss fight. For this, we need to retrieve a key from a grate on the floor in the shield room. To get the key, we needed to start a trial of some sorts to fill the grate with blood in order to get the key to float to the top for us to pick it up. Sounds easy enough, and, and well it was, alright? The Helion Salvo just keeps getting W's and was just clowning on all of these mini bosses and zombies. It was so easy that we were literally just getting bored of this step and we're just waiting for it to be over. So I won't waste any of your time. We picked up the key at the 2 hour and 19 minute mark and we were now ready for the boss fight. We were already ready for the boss fight, so it went straight to the portal in the spawn arena and after interacting with it, we were teleported to the boss arena and the boss fight began. So this boss fight really isn't that difficult. It starts off with you fighting a bunch of gladiators and as previously demonstrated, our Helion Salvo made actual light work of them. You know, just ignore the fact I downed here. Anyways, after clowning on these gladiators, for some reason, they thought the next best thing to throw at us was a bunch of tigers. Like, yeah, you know, I'm sure they'll withstand all of our rocket shots. Anyways, once they were out of the way, the battle really started, right? The elephant came out to play, and we had to teach this boy a little lesson real quick. To start off, you need to take off his armor, which was easy enough with the Helion Salvo, and then you need to shoot his insides to take him down completely. And now, surprisingly, with me and Tyler both shooting all of our Helion Salvo ammo into this, it took no time at all, and we finished this boss fight by 2 hours and 24 minutes. And you know, with a little word, play I said this boss fight because we now had a second elephant to take out alright this was their main threat you know the big bad he he's dead yeah, alright, the Helion Salvo just made absolute light work of this boss and we actually completed his easter egg by the 2 hours and 25 minute mark. So, as the cutscene played, we were quite happy with how fast we completed this easter egg. It took us a little bit over an hour and 10 minutes to complete, which was actually around the same time it took us to complete Voyage. So far, this was going really well and 12 hours was looking more than possible. So, with that, we wasted no time and we immediately loaded onto our next map. We were now onto, without a doubt, the most controversial map on Black Ops 4. This being Blood of the Dead. Now, this map is split 50-50 in the community with either you love it or you hate it, right? There's no in-between. So, where do I fit into this? Up until now, all of my experiences on Blood of the Dead was on PS4. So, I don't exactly see Blood of the Dead in a good light, but who knows, alright? Maybe it'll change by the end of this easter egg. So, there is a few prerequisites before this easter egg actually starts. Those being that we need to get the spoon and the monkey bombs. So, let's start off with how to get the monkey bombs, right? There's a small little easter egg on this map where you can get the monkey bombs for free. To do this, you just need to go under these stairs near the original Mob of the Dead spawn, and there's this monkey bomb statue that if you start getting kills with a level 2 specialist, it will start filling it up with souls. So we wanted to make a start on this as soon as possible, so we used a talisman that lets us spawn in with a level 2 specialist. After getting enough souls, it started glowing, and then once we shot it, it flew away. After returning back to the new spawn, there will now be a monkey bomb that just sits on the table, and if you pick it up, that's how you get the monkey bombs without having to use the mystery box. So now we're onto the spoon, alright, and the first thing you need to do is you need to get the Hell's Retriever. This is done in the same way that you do it in Mob of the Dead where you just need to fill up three dogs around the map with zombies and after we had done that we took this fast travel right here and then picked up the Hell's Retriever along the way. Now with the Hell's Retriever in hand we went back to the Warden's office and used the Spectral Shield to see the secret code that was hidden on the wall. This shield by the way is pretty much this game's version of Afterlife so it comes in very useful for many steps during this easter egg. We took this code down to the number pad down in the Citadel and after inputting the code we now had to head down to the docks where there's his power meter and after shocking it with the Spectral Shield a crane would come out of the water that was holding the spoon. And now all we had to do was just throw the Hell's Retriever at the spoon 
boom, which would cause it to drop, and then we could just pick it up off this wooden crate. So that was all of the prerequisites we needed before we could actually start the Easter egg. So now that we had the spoon and the monkey bombs, we were ready for the first step. So what we needed now was we needed a Brutus that could do a slam attack. And now normally these don't spawn until round 19, but if you enter the code 666 into the Citadel number pad, we could spawn in one of these Brutuses early and get this step done earlier than we actually were allowed to. So now that we had the Brutus inside the map, we had to return back to the Warden's house. And after going up the stairs, we could knife the wall with the spoon we got, which would leave scratch marks. Why we couldn't just do this with our regular knife is beyond me, but we then had to bring Brutus up the stairs and throw a monkey bomb at the floor, and this would cause him to do his slam attack. And if it's done correctly, the wall should blow up and it will reveal the burnt up warden, which is exactly what happened. And now we needed to go into this room so that we could grab this little red orb here. And after returning back to spawn and placing the red orb on this map, we could now interact with the Cronorium. But before we could do that, this dastardly bird robs it away from us, and it's now our job to get it back. Now, this is a step that everyone always brings up when they talk about how bad the Blood of the Dead Easter egg is. Essentially, once around, you need to find this bird that can only be seen in the Spectral Shield, and then you have to blast this, and after you do this three times, you can move on to the next step. But you see, there is 40 different bird locations around the map. Now, of course, no one is going to sit there and enjoy looking through all of these locations, but that's what most people had to do for this Easter egg. Until one day, where there was a cheeky little trick discovered where at the beginning of a round, if you look through the shield near the gondola, you'll actually just see the bird spawn in and fly to a certain area of the map. This makes this step so much easier, as all you need to do is just go to that area of the map, and then you'll hear the bird start yapping, and then that lets you pinpoint exactly where he is. So yeah, you know, we shot the bird three times using this trick, and we were now on to the next part of his step. For this next part, we needed to find where the bird was, but we can't actually see him through the spectral shield. Instead, we'll know we're close when we start hearing the warden crying like a little bit, but after we find him, we need to go into zombie blood, which we can do by entering 872 into the number pad, and once we picked it up, we needed to go to the spot where we heard the warden crying and throw the hell retriever at it. Now, maybe it's just me and I just suck at the game, but I actually hate this step. L like, I swear, right? It just never works for me. Like, I'll find the bird, you know, I'll throw my hell retriever at it, and it'll just do nothing. Like, why game? What's going on here? Like, this step, alright, it just makes me go really grumpy, but after some trial and error, we ended up getting the Cronorium, and we could finally move on to the next step. Well, actually, before we started on this next step, we took a minute to upgrade our Blundergat into the Magma Gat. The way to do this is by going into the Warden's house and putting our Blundergat into this fireplace, and once we had done that, we needed to start getting kills and pick up the blue souls until all three of the schools above the fireplace were glowing blue. Once all the schools were glowing blue, we infused those souls into the Blundergat, and we had to run all the way back to spawn to forge it into the Magma Gat. Along the way, we had to make sure we were hitting these flaming blue barrels to ensure the Magma Gat didn't lose its flame, but this was easy enough, and eventually we did make it back to the new industries building, and we forged ourselves the Magma Gat. Now, this wonder weapon is actually extremely powerful, as it attracts the zombies, and it one-shots the Brutuses, so this is going to be extremely useful throughout this easter egg. So, with the Cronorium and Magma Gat in hand, we went back to the Warden's house, and we gave the Warden the Cronorium, and this lets us start up the trials. Now, the way this works is that whenever the book starts flickering between pages, we need to interact with it and look at the pages through the shield. This will give us a code, and after we input that into the number pad in the Citadels, this will start a trial in one of five locations around the map. These being the docks, the powerhouse, the showers, new industries, and Michigan Avenue. So throughout our game, I won't lie, we did fail this a bunch of times, so I'll only be going over the successful ones, which is why you're going to see us starting on round 12 and then finishing up on round 22. So after inputting the first code, the trial we got was the one in Michigan Avenue. And now this is actually a pretty easy challenge, especially since we got the Magma Gap before this. To start it off, we need to go to the cafeteria and we need to get a kill so our ghost will spawn into the map. Then once we shield blast it with the shield, he will start moving throughout the prison and we need to defend it from the zombies until it reaches the portal we shocked originally to actually activate the trial. Now with zombies coming from each direction, you'd think this would be rather difficult, but as I said, the Magma Gat literally attracts the zombies, so they didn't even get a chance to go near the ghost. Needless to say, this was really easy and we completed it on our first try. Another thing to note is that after each trial, a red orb will appear on the floor and we need to pick these up and use them in a later step on the Easter egg. But yeah, after picking it up, that completed our first out of five trials. We went back up to the ones office to get another code, and after inputting it into the number pad, the second trial we got was the Docs trial, aka the infamous Morse code trial. This is another step that everyone always brings up to why this Easter egg sucks, and it's easy to understand. On solo. On co-op, yes, it can get tedious, but it really isn't as bad as people made it out to be. Essentially, all you need to do is just go to the warden's office and enter in the correct Morse code order here to continue on with the rest of the trial. Now, there's two ways you can do this, alright? You can either look around the map at the buoys and try and get the order that way, or you can do it the way I do it, where you just brute force your way through it with trial and error. So, that's exactly what we did, alright? Tyler held the last zombie, and I sat there trying to brute force the order until we eventually get a breakthrough and completed that step. So, the next part of this trial is that we need to take a zombie into the infirmary and kill it to spawn in a ghost. And with this ghost, we need to fill him up with souls until he starts following us and lead him all the way back down to the docks back to his boat. Doing this would finish the trial and give us our second red orb, so that's two out of the five trials complete, and again, it really wasn't that bad and I was genuinely surprised. Again, after grabbing another code from the warden's office and entering into the number pad, the third trial we got was the powerhouse trial, aka Simon Says. Now, I just have to say, I hate this trial, okay? It's the most annoying trial, and if you fail, literally right at the end, it resets you all the way back to the beginning where you have to do it all over again. It's just super annoying, so bear with me while I try to explain this. So, to start 
start this trial, you need to go down to building 64 near the docks and interact with this machine right here. This starts a game of Simon Says where these generators will begin to glow in a certain order and you need to repeat this order back to the game. Now it sounds simple until you realise a bunch of zombies are going to come and try and distract you but don't worry alright, me and Tyler had a plan. If you look at this lovely little cheat sheet right here, you'll see that each generator is labelled with a letter and this helps us keep track of what generators we need to press. And with me and Tyler ensuring we got the right order through lots of pain and suffering, we managed to give back the correct order 5 times. Once we did that, 3 generators would turn on briefly and we needed to write down the symbol that was on the generator for the next part of the trial. Before we left however, we did grab this punch card on this table and we made our way back up to the spawn building where we now had a bunch of monitors that were displaying different symbols and we needed to interact with the monitors that had our symbols on them. After we did that, it would give us 3 more symbols that we had to memorise and we had to take those symbols down to the ghost near the powerhouse where this ghost was going over to a bunch of levers and what we had to do was we had to shield blast him while he was at the correct level with our symbol on it. Once we had the ghost pull the correct 3 levers, the ghost would despawn and a red orb would appear on the floor. And after picking that up, we were finally off this stupid trial. I probably butchered the explanation to this trial just like how it butchered my brain, so let's just accept the trial is over and just move on to our next one. With two of the most infamous trials out of the way, it should be smooth sailing from here. After inputting the code for the fourth trial, the trial we got was the one in the new industries building. This trial is pretty straightforward, okay? In the library, a ghost will spawn and after shooting him with the shield blast, he will begin walking around the prison back down to the new industries building. What we need to do is we need to suck him up with the key until he turns fully red and then once he is red, we need to activate a trap in the new industries building to take him out. Now, we can only suck up this ghost it just sounds dodgy every time I say it. After we had shot him with the shield blast. This is why the upgraded shield, which is something I haven't actually brought up yet, is extremely important as it increases the amount of shield blast you can hold from 2 to 4. So after using the key on him enough times, he eventually started moving real quick and with one activation of the new industry's trap, we got ourselves the 4th red orb we needed. This now meant we were onto our very final trial, which was the showers trial. This is one of the easier trials, which is actually a nice way to end it after the last few trials. But yeah, for this one, we need to go to this ghost and we need to pick up the banjo he's holding and once we have it, we need to start going to these flame circles on the floor and get kills. Now, if I'm not mistaken, like every 90 seconds, the game just starts doing damage to you. So what you need to do is you need to go back to the ghost, give him the banjo and then pick it back up and continue getting kills until the banjo is no longer taking souls. Once we've done this, we just need to go back to the ghost and give him the banjo and he will drop us our very final red orb. So with all five orbs obtained, we return back to the spawn room and place those orbs on this map. And after returning back to the crinorium, a cutscene would play where I won't lie, right, we got our ass beat by the warden and thrown into jail cells. Now this cutscene was just a long wait to be honest, but eventually the bird from before came to rescue us and broke us out of our cell and from here it was a sprint back to the spawn room. Once we got there, Brutus popped a mushroom and became like mega Brutus and then he just got bullied by a bunch of ghosts and after picking up the final red orb and placing it on the map, we were now at the boss fight. Now I won't lie right, this is just another really easy boss fight. Essentially, it's split into three stages, each being the same. You just need to kill Brutus over and over again until he spawns this like red circle thing around him and if you don't end the circle, by the way, you, you just die. So once we entered this like red circle, we needed to shoot the red orbs that were around Brutus and then once we did that, we just had to turn around around and shield blast the machine and repeat this with each time spawning more and more Brutuses. Now this becomes super easy with the magma gap because as I said it literally one shots him so eventually after doing it a few times the ultimate sacrifice must be made and since I was playing as Richtofen I had to enter into the machine and get all of the blood sucked out of me. This is where the big reveal happens where Richtofen from the Great War was just chilling in the freezer. You can see what I did there. So what happens then is he comes out, he shows us his cool rock, and then it's time for the big battle against Brutus, alright? Except we just one-tap him. And yeah, you know, that was just the end of the Easter egg. And I know these boss fights have been really short talked about, but genuinely, they just haven't been that hard. But either way, as one of the saddest cutscenes in all of Call of Duty Zombies played, we had now completed three out of the eight Easter eggs for this video. This is one of our longest ones so far, coming in at around two hours-ish, putting our total time up to four hours and 20 minutes. This was a bit of a loss in time, but as long as we don't have any more Easter eggs take this long, we should be fine. But yeah, I mean, the Blood of the Dead Easter egg actually wasn't as bad as I remember it being, it was actually kind of fun. Maybe I'm just a masochist, I don't know, but either way, without wasting any more time, we jump straight onto our next map. So, Classified is a weird map of this video, as technically the ending cutscene is achieved by reaching round 150, which, if we did want to complete this challenge in under 12 hours, would be literally impossible. However, we did want to just exclude Classified from this video, so I got to search it. The easter egg speedrun for Classified on Zombie World Records is not the round 150 easter egg, it's actually a much more obtainable easter egg with it being the Cold War Remedy easter egg. For this easter egg, all you have to do is obtain the free Winter's Howl. So, this is where you make your own decision on whether or not this is considered all the Black Ops 4 easter eggs, because I count this as the easter egg and so the zombie world records. I mean, some people don't even include classified when going for all the Black Ops 4 easter eggs, so I think our decision is valid, but then again, some people complain that we turned off the fog in transit, so yeah, let's just consider this the easter egg and let's just get right into it. So, for this easter egg, we need to obtain four codes around the map and input them into a big monitor in the war room. But before we could do this, we needed to open up the entire map and get all of the parts to get Pack a Punch. Since we allowed ourselves to use Mega Elixirs, we popped the shopping free and we got all of this done relatively quickly and we can get to work on getting the codes we needed. The first code we got was the Shangri La code. Now, to do this, all you need to do is throw an acid grenade 
grenade into the back of this window here and if done correctly the code should appear on the wall. So after writing that down we then got to work on the second code which was the Kino of the Totem code. Now Tyler did this code all on his own so I don't exactly have the content for this but essentially you got the code by using the defcons in a certain order and then going into the panic room and interacting with a TV that reveals the Kino of the Totem code. Very simple stuff so after we got that code the next code we had to get was in the main offices. So in the war room there's actually a key that you can pick up. You can take that key all the way up to the main offices and if you interact with this desk right here it will actually reveal another code alongside a picture of the Reese. And then the final code required is to get a pack punch gun and shoot these presidents plaques in a certain order to reveal the Shino Numa code. Then with all four codes obtained we needed to head down to this big monitor computer thingy in the war room and enter the codes in this order. So starting off we had the Shino Numa code, second was the Doris code, third was the Shangri-La code and then the final code was the Kino the Totem code. Then all we needed to do was go to no man's land and wait three rounds until this debris disappears and then once it does we can interact with this box in the corner and that will allow us to pick up the witness howl. And then yeah that literally marks the end of the easter egg alright I know it's not the round 150 easter egg but as I said this is what the community deems as the easter egg of the map so if you were expecting the round 150 easter egg I'm sorry but either way we got this easter egg done by the 4 hours and 45 minute mark and yeah right with that let's just jump onto our next easter egg. So now that we were done with all of the base game maps, we are now onto the DLC maps of this game where we have Dead of the Night. This is without a doubt my favourite map in this game and is so underrated in my opinion. The easter egg for this map is also incredibly simple as long as you know how to do everything. In basic terms, all you have to do is just open up Pack-a-Punch, get some upgrades, do some trials and then do some lockdowns and then it's boss fight time. But again, although this sounds easy on paper, the steps themselves can get confusing for someone who doesn't know how to do everything on the map. So yeah, getting into this easter egg, the first thing we have to do is grab the Sentinel Artifact. Then we need to start trying to get Pack-a-Punch. Now, the way you do is by finding crystals around the map and filling up with zombie souls and once they're full after interacting with them they will show you an object around the map that you need to go and find. So our first crystal required us to go find the noose which I knew was down in the cellar so after going down to the cellar a ghost would appear and we needed to follow this ghost which would lead us towards the music room and after we got there a wall would blow open and it revealed our first tuning fork. So just for the record we needed to get three tuning forks so that we could unlock the path into the forest which is where pack a bunch is and after we do each of these three little mini challenges they will give us a tuning fork. Just thought I'd explain that for anyone who doesn't know this map. So yeah our second crystal told us to find a clock and now there's three clocks around the map and the one we got was the one in the dining room. So after interacting with the clock this kind of clock thing would appear on the floor and would start to tick down while zombies spawned into attackers. After it made a full circle and 12 ticked away the clock opened up and revealed our second tuning fork. And then onto our final crystal it told us to find one of the perk machines and after going near it a bunch of vampires were spawned and after taking them all out our final tuning fork would appear. Now I'm pretty sure that Tyler did this one so I don't have any gameplay for it so I hope my paint pictures portrayed the gist of it. Anyways after getting all three tuning forks we returned back to the forest entrance where we could destroy this thing blocking the entrance and now something to note is that doing this summons a werewolf so before we continue I just want to back up a little bit. Now the reason we did this was because before we went into the forest we made sure that we had built silver bullets. Now not only does this increase damage towards the werewolf but if you kill a werewolf with these silver bullets it allows us to get a part towards the wonder weapon upgrade. Now it is a must right that we get this part from this werewolf in particular because otherwise another werewolf won't spawn until round 19. So back to where we were we used the tuning forks to unblock the entrance to the forest so we took out the werewolf using silver bullets and we also collected the wonder weapon upgrade part that it dropped. Another thing to note is that earlier on in the game I also collected the other parts of the upgrade which was by hitting this bookcase with a shield which revealed the second part to us. We also used immolation liquidations so we could try and get the wonder weapon out of the mystery box. So once we had the wonder weapon we went to the greenhouse where we could interact with this machine here to turn the part we got from the werewolf into another part and then after going to the workbench in the same area we were able to turn the wonder weapon into the chaos fury. Before we could actually continue on with the easter egg we had to collect all of the parts so that we could turn the chaos fury into the Alice's Annihilator. So for the first part we needed to go to the graveyard and we needed to go to these lamps and shoot the orange ones. So after we did this correctly a vampire spawned and after shooting him out the sky he dropped the first part to the next upgrade. We then went to the forest and we used one of the charge shots in order to make these zombies dig up these mushroom dig spots. Now there is a few of these mushroom dig spots around the forest so after we made him dig up the correct one it gave us another part for the next upgrade. The final part we needed to collect was by using the tornado attack on the vampires in order to collect bile. So once we had filled up a jar with bile we took her over to this grave and we put the bile on it. This summons a red vampire and after taking them out it gave us our final piece to the Alice's Annihilator. So just like the Chaos Fury we took it back to the greenhouse, we interacted with this machine a few times and then we went to the buildable bench and crafted the Alice's Annihilator. So with all of the upgrades out the way we could now start on the challenges. To start these we needed to interact with the crystals we used to get Pack-a-Punch and then this will reveal a challenge for us and you can do this in any order but I'll just go over the order that we did. The first challenge we tackled was the Effigy Quest. For this challenge we needed to go to the graveyard and shoot the trees with our Alice's Annihilator in order to collect tree branches. Once we had collected all the branches we then needed to find the gravestone with the date 1912 on it. And now depending on the character it 
it was showing on the gravestone, they had to go interact with it and it would put them into this zombie blood state. Luckily, it was my character on the grave, so once I interacted with it, I went over to the pile of sticks that we had collected, and then it reforged itself into a cross, and I had to sacrifice myself to HE double hockey sticks. This put me into afterlife, and now the task was simple, okay? All I had to do was just run around the map until I found a ghost, and once I had found the ghost, I needed to guide her back to the graveyard in order to complete this challenge. This was simple enough, so I found our ghost in the master bedroom, and I guided her all the way to the graveyard in order to complete the first challenge. And now one thing you'll notice upon completion is that they'll drop this stone, but don't worry, alright, we'll come back to what this is used for later on. The next challenge we decided to tackle was the telescope quest, this easily being the most complicated challenge of this easter egg. To start this, me and Tyler had to go to the graveyard and shoot this bell with a silver bullet weapon at the same time, and doing this causes a giant beam to be shot towards the mansion. Now for this next part, we needed to go to the bridge in the main hall, and we needed to fiddle around with these switches until all three of the coloured lights were being blocked. This would cause the statue to blow up and would now let us see tally marks around the map. I, I, I don't know either to be honest. But either way, we now need to look around the entire map collecting tally marks and symbols for us to input into a machine in the greenhouse. Now collecting these symbols and tally marks is just incredibly time consuming as there are so many locations. So I won't go into much detail about where we got ours, but all you need to know is that we had all of the symbols and tally marks collected by the 5 hours and 37 minute mark. We then needed to go to this telescope thing and we needed to input the correct code that we got. We did this by inputting the symbols from lowest tally marks to highest tally marks. And if done correctly, it would accept the symbols that we gave it. And then we just had to go to this wheel here and turn it until the roof was open and then bash it with the shield to keep it open. We were now nearly done as all me and Tyler had to do was activate the electric trap below this area, run through it with our shields out in order to electrify them and then melee the Dr. Doofenshmirtz invention to reveal the moon in the sky. It really is just some like Dr. Doofenshmirtz invention, like Perry the Platypus, you're just in time for me to reveal the moon over the tri-state area. But either way, that completed the challenge and somehow I made it sound really simple but also extremely complicated at the same time. But just trust me alright, this is one of the downsides of this easter egg. But either way, that is two of the three challenges we needed to complete. Now the final challenge we did was the night quest. This challenge starts off by using a fire trap in the library and then shooting it with a charge shot from the Alice's Annihilator. This will turn the flame blue and if we run into it with our shield out it will light the shield on fire. With this we need to run to certain fireplaces and hit them with the shield in a certain order. So the first set of fireplaces we need to hit is the smoking room, the right library fireplace, the left library fireplace and then finally the billiards room. After doing it correctly a gemstone appeared in the fireplace for us to pick up. So there's two more sets of fireplaces we need to do this with. Our second set of fireplaces required us to melee them in this order. This being the left fireplace in the main hall, the east gallery, the right fireplace in the main hall, and then finally the west gallery. Once again, after we did this set of fireplaces, we got ourselves another gemstone, and then our very final set of fireplaces we need to hit was in this order. This being trophy room, the master bedroom, the music room, and then the dining room. This gave us our very final gemstone and let us move on to the next part of this challenge. For this next part, we needed to run around the map and find certain statues that would accept the gemstones. After placing the gemstones, it would cause his spirit to break loose, and it would continue to follow us, so what we needed to do was we needed to lead it into the forest and guide it into a certain location. Now these three statues were located in the graveyard, the garden and the main hall. So after bringing all of the spirits to the correct places they would return back into night and we had to get kills near them. And as we did that it would slowly begin to move closer to the pack a bunch machine. Eventually after doing this all three night it would cause this sort of triangle thing to appear on the ground. And what we needed to do was that we needed to kill a werewolf inside it in order to give us our very final stone and complete the challenge. So that's exactly what we did, we got our stone and then we completed the challenge. Now you know I said at the beginning of all these challenges that I would come back to these stones later? Well, with all three challenges completed, we now needed to go back to each of the stones they dropped and interact with them to start a lockdown sequence. Now, I won't lie, with our Helion salvos and wonder weapons in hand, these were really not that difficult, especially since the werewolves they throw at you are literally a two-shot by the Helion salvo. Honestly, at this point, nothing is safe from the Helion salvo. So yeah, right, we just speed round to get through all of these lockdowns, and after picking up the rock, we were now at the boss fight. So this boss fight is actually the first time where we didn't have an OP weapon just to absolutely clap the boss. We actually had a bit of a challenge ahead of us. So to actually get to the boss fight, we needed to go to this cave in the forest and we needed to interact with the glowing rocks to begin a cutscene and then once the cutscene had actually ended the boss fight began. So this boss fight is actually pretty straightforward but it can get hard relatively quick. So what you need to do is you need to turn these statues that the green light on them is pointing towards the green box on the floor. So once we had all the green lights pointing towards the box we now had to lead the werewolf over to the box in order to be able to damage him. Well you see there is only one problem with this is that the werewolf is literally invisible and this is why it can get kind of difficult as sometimes he will just charge you and just do a bunch of damage to you. And as I said alright we didn't have an OP weapon for this so we did have to do this multiple times just to get off the first stage but eventually we moved on to the next stage and now we had to fight off a bunch of werewolves. Again similar to the lockdown step it really wasn't that bad as the Helion Salvo just made light work of this but then it came to the actual werewolf boss fight. This boss fight only got harder as now the green box on the floor was also invisible and wouldn't show up until you at least had one correct statue placement. But look alright Team Detective we're used to solving puzzles like this so we got to work and although it took some time at the 6 hours and 5 minute mark we had finally taken down the werewolf and completed this easter egg. This easter egg took a little over an hour which really wasn't bad at all. 
We had just hit the halfway point on our time limit and we had completed 5 out of the 8 maps for this video. At this point we were honestly aiming for 10 hours rather than 12 hours but you never know what lies ahead okay so let's just see what our next map has in store for us. So our next map is another fan favourite in Black Ops 4, this being Ancient Evil. Now this map follows the same formula as Origins or The Rising Drag with there being 4 different wonder weapons for each player. So overall it's just a very good map. When it comes to this easter egg I remember it being quite complicated so hopefully we can complete this in a decent time. Like usual for these easter eggs the first step is to get power on and in this map's case it's the sentinel artifact. So after doing that we now had to start getting the wonder weapons of the map, these being the gauntlets. You do need all 4 gauntlets in order to complete this easter egg so me and Tyler split these where I do the grass gauntlet and the blood gauntlet and tyler would do the sun gauntlet and the wind gauntlet i i don't know the exact name of these gauntlets so you know this is the best we're getting now i'm not going to go into detail about how to upgrade every single gauntlet because otherwise this become a mr off waffles no nonsense guide but what i will talk about is to get the base gauntlet you need to find a dormant hand and now these can be found somewhere around the map with like a purple glowing aura to it it can either be found in a dig spot or it can be found in a plant it can literally appear anywhere once we did have the dormant hand all we had to do was go to one of the gauntlet altars and after doing a mini lockdown we were able to redeem the gauntlet it's actually surprisingly easy and honestly the upgrades aren't that difficult either. Usually it consists of doing a task around the map and then doing another lockdown and then that's it. So back to where we were. Once I had received the grass gauntlet, me and Tyler went over to the dark side of the map and got to work on opening Pack-a-Punch. This is also extremely easy to do as all you need to do is hit these two cages with your specialist weapon and do a little mini lockdown in order to unlock the Pack-a-Punch. After we had completed this, I went back to the light side of the map and upgraded the grass gauntlet and then I also found a second dormant hand so I could begin working on the blood gauntlet. Now I know I said I wasn't going to talk about upgrading the gauntlets but I just want to point out how bad the blood gauntlets upgrade is. Essentially in the dark dark side of the map you need to get kills in this water here until it turns into blood and then once you have drank it you have to run around the dark side trying to find three scattered coins. Now it doesn't sound too bad until you realise there's also fake coins alongside the real coins and if I had to take a guess on how many coin locations there is there's probably about 25 and to top it off you have to do all of this without any health regeneration so this step just sucks right I think I spent a hot minute trying to find all of these coins and genuinely I think I came out of this easter egg with PTSD like I never want to think about it again. Anyways at this point Tyler has also upgraded his two gauntlets so we were able to start on the first step of the easter egg. Well we'd actually been working on this step throughout getting all of the gauntlets as what we had to do was we had to continuously do trials and get high rewards in order to make the flame at spawn turn blue. This step can actually take a while so we started it sooner rather than later and by the 6 hours and 41 minute mark we had finally made the flame at spawn turn blue. So now that we had the blue flame we had to pull out the shield and melee the flame with the spear in order to set it on fire. With this flamed up spear we now had to run around the map and melee these three oil spills in order to set them on fire. So the locations of these oil spills were at the bridge near spawn, on a wall in the intersection of treasuries and on another wall in the Stoa of the Athenians. After doing this we now need to go to where we took Pegasus originally to go to the dark side and then we need to shoot a charge shot from the blood gauntlet on the floor and then this put us into death vision which made the statue's eyes go blue and what we had to do was we needed to shoot these statues in order to break them. Eventually after we shot all the statues our vision went back to normal and we could move on to the next step. For this next step we had to run around the map and look at certain holes that had two cogs inside of them. What we had to do was we needed to wait for these two cogs to be aligned with each other and then throw a spear at it and if done correctly the spear should go through one of the cogs stopping it in place. It's a a little confusing to explain but essentially we're just jamming the cogs together so that we can spin these statues in the middle of the map. So the three locations for these was the Stoa of Athenians next to the oil spill, the intersection of treasuries near this auger wall by, and again in the intersection of treasuries down the stairs from the oil spill. Once we had done that we now had to go to the middle of the map where all three statues should be spinning. And now what we had to do was we had to throw a spear in this very tiny gap in the wall when all of the statues were looking at each other. Now I won't lie this shot is actually really hard to hit so me and Tyler we just hope for the best and we just spammed it with spears and eventually we managed to get it. So we now need to use the grass gauntlet over by the offerings of Atalid, I think that's how you say it, and shoot three sets of roots in order to spawn a Giga, oh bro there's actually so many confusing names, a Giga Knees, the mini boss of the map okay, now I tried this and I could never seem to do it so Tyler took over and spawned the main man himself, now he was used for two things right, one we needed to take him over to this red crystal and have him use a shield attack to break it giving us the sundial, and two was that when we killed him he would drop a spear, and now we needed these items as they will be used in a later step, so next up we needed to get ourselves the sun gauntlet and we needed to give it to the Rao perk machine, doing this would cause the Rao perk machine to start producing a laser beam and it's going to start firing at this wall and what we need to do is we need to protect it from a bunch of skeletons. Now with us having the gauntlets and the helion salvo defending the wall from the skeletons was no problem at all as I defended it from the front and Tyler defended it from the back. Once the wall had been destroyed we picked up the scepter that was behind it and we gave it back to the Rao statue complete in that step. So this next step is a little bit confusing so I'll try my best to explain it. Essentially there's this golden dial thing in the offering of Atlantis area and we need to place the rod we got from killing the mini boss inside of it. Then we need to lead an electric zombie over to it and 
and once we kill it on top of it, it will show the symbol inside begin to rotate. And now this is where the confusing part is. What we need to do is stop the symbol on this electric line and the easiest way to do this is by counting how many rotations it takes to reach there. Once it is over the electric line, we just need to interact with the dial to place the symbol and we had to do that three times. It's not that bad as long as you can save a zombie, but when getting swarmed by enemies, this step can be a massive pain in the ass. So for us, we used our homunculuses to help us give us enough time to complete the step and after a bit of trying, we managed to complete the step by the 6 hours and 58 minute mark. So next up, we got Tret like little puppets in the show and we had to return back to the amphitheater to perform in a play. Now the way we did this was by shooting our gauntlets at targets in the crowd and not missing a single shot. And we had to do this three times in order to complete the step and honestly, the hardest part is just trying to keep up with the ammo it requires. But don't worry, alright, me and Tyler, we performed our hearts out and we put on a show that had the whole crowd tearing up and cheering at the finale. At least I know if YouTube doesn't work out, then I always have a spot in the performing industry. Anyways, with that step complete, we were now coming up to the end of this easter egg. What we had to do now is we had to go to this area of the dark side of the map and enter a code into this door here. Once we had done that, this cutscene played which brutally showed <laughs> Robot Bruno executing an old man. You know, not something you hear every day, but you know, that's exactly what happened. After the cutscene, this blue symbol appears on the floor and we need to place a Pegasus strike on this symbol to summon Pegasus. Once we had done this, we needed to use the wing gauntlet on the crossbow in front of us to aim it towards Pegasus, and then once this was all in place, we needed to go back to the spawn room and set our shield spear on fire again. We had to return back to the dark side of the map and activate the acid trap and run through it with our flaming spear out in order to obtain an acid flaming spear. Why it needs to be acid, I don't really know, but with this acid flaming spear, we had to go back up to the crossbow, melee the rope, and this would set the crossbow off shooting the big statue above the pack a punch machine. And now doing this for some reason activates the portal to the boss fight, but you know, ignoring how that makes no sense, we were now at the boss fight. After going through the portal, we were a little bit nervous, as I won't lie, this boss fight was not the easiest, but with our helion salvos and redeemed gauntlets, we pushed through to fight Pegasus. Essentially, for this first part of the boss fight, we had to hit Pegasus with either the helion salvo or the gauntlets until he fell onto one of the platforms. Once he did, we needed to pull out the specialist weapon and just go to town on him. We did this once with no problems, right? Me and Tyler, we were just doming on this poor little horse. You know, so far, so good, alright? We just had to do this a few more times and then Pegasus would be out the picture. I mean, like, come on now, surely nothing bad can happen. My game crashed. My game literally crashed in the boss fight, alright? I couldn't believe it. We just spent all of our time trying to beat the ancient evil easter egg just for the game to crash. Is this actually where our easter egg attempt of ancient evil ends? Do we really need to redo it all over again? Well, not quite. You see, I wasn't the host of this game. Tyler was. So yeah, while I was out of the game, Tyler wasn't. If he could finish up the Ancient Evil boss fight solo, we still had a chance at beating every Black Ops 4 easter egg in 12 hours. So with the most scuffed setup ever, Tyler started sharing his screen on Discord and we just had to watch and pray that he could finish this for us. So Tyler continued to do damage to Pegasus until eventually he had done enough damage with the specialist weapon that the big bad boss of the map had enough of our antics and took measures into his own hands. He took down Pegasus for us and now we were onto the final part of this boss fight. But this stage, we pretty much had to do the same thing we did for Pegasus except to him. So when he came onto the map, Tyler hit him with everything he had until he turned orange and once again Tyler went to town with the specialist weapon and after this extremely close call where Tyler went down, even the game said nah bro I want to see him complete this. So the game gave him a self revive and after repeating the process of hitting him with the specialist weapon he eventually blew up and gave us the oracle key. This allowed us to finish up the boss fight and this easter egg so after that insane clutch up from Tyler what did he have to say about it? Bro, we clutch off our team detective though. So with that, we completed the Ancient Evil Easter Egg, and honestly, that has been the most nerve-wracking Easter Egg yet. But as Team Detective says, alright, we always pull through, and we managed to complete this at the 7 hours and 27 minute mark. With 6 out of 8 maps complete, and still having nearly 5 hours left on the clock, there was no doubt in my mind that we could complete this in 12 hours. But could we push for 10 hours? Let's see what's in store for us in our next map. So Alpha Omega is a map that isn't liked by a majority of the community. Some say it's just an overall bad map and some say it's the developers just being lazy. But there is a very small part of the community that does like it and me personally, I I'm not a fan. So when it came to doing this easter egg, I wasn't exactly looking forward to it but I knew for you guys watching at home, I had to power through it. So like usual, the first thing we got to work on was turning on the power and activating the Packer Punch. The power was easy enough but the Packer Punch was a little bit more complicated. Essentially what we had to do was we had to go into the bunker and go down to this generator and after interacting with it, it started a little lockdown sequence. After it was complete, we had to go back up to the village area and find ventilation units that were producing Nova gas. After repairing all four of the ventilation machines, we now had access to the Packer Punch. Also, during this time, we got set up with our weapons and we also went around the map collecting parts for the telepad, as this was used in a step later on. So, the next step in the Easter egg was that we needed to interact with Rushmore and after doing so, he was going to ask us to find four access codes and enter them in a certain order. Doing this not only lets us continue on with the Easter egg, but it also unlocks the Adam robot, which is once again used in a step later on. So, onto the codes, the first code we went and got was in the operations room. 
room. This was super easy to find as it was just sitting on a desk to the left of Rushmore and the code was 7262. The next code we got was the Sawyer code and this was located in the APD interrogation room. For us it was just on this desk here on the second floor and the code that we got was 2429. The third code we got was Pinnell's code. We got this by grabbing a key in the solitary building and using it on this desk here in the yellow house. This code was 4066. And the final code we got was for our main man Peter Bacane. We found his code under the stack of papers in the APD control room and this code was 9386. So if all four codes obtained we return back to Rushmore and enter the codes in the order he asked for. So he started off with the code in operations, he then asked for the Sawyer code, he then asked for the Peter McCain code and then finally he asked for the Pinnell code. So we did this in an attempt to make Rushmore trust us however even though we gave him codes that only members of his base would know he still said nah bro I don't trust you you know try again doing something else. And this leads us right on to our next step. For this step we had to buy ourselves the Galvan Knuckles and then kill a zombie next to a static TV either located in a diner, lounge or the bed. In our game we had it in the diner area so once we found the TV we killed the zombie in front of it and this caused the TV to start giving out letters and numbers. The letters correlated to houses up in the village and the numbers we were given were actually times. With this information we had to go to each house and go to the clock in the house to input the correct time. This did take a little bit of time, I'm actually so good at doing puns. This is mainly because of how long it actually took to set the times as it goes around the clock in 15 minute intervals. But eventually we had gone to every single house and set the correct time and we're now onto the next part of the step. So there was one house which we didn't set the time for and what we had to do was we had to go to that house and find the clock and then hit it with the galvaducals and that would spin the clock around and give us a four digit code. So in our game the code was 0530. We took this code back to Rushmore in hopes that he would now trust us but he was still being a little pain in the bum all right and told us he doesn't trust us. What we had to do now was go down to the bunker and try and find a red Nova crawler and lead it into a window in the transfusion facility. Now I won't lie we got really lucky as I found the Nova crawler pretty much instantly and he was right next to where we had to lead him to. Plus being on such a low round we got this done really quick. Even Tyler was surprised on how fast we got this step completed. Oh you already did it? Honestly just call me a speedrunner what can I say? So with that step out of the way we now have to go bully some nerds right? I heard there were some little geeks on the premises who were robbing our containers and me and Tyler being the six foot beast caves we are we had to put a stop to this. What we had to do for this step is we had to take the Adam robot we unlocked to this bunker door where the nerds leader Malton was hiding. Now of him no offense being a massive pussy the sight of a robot scared the life out of him so he just gave us a container no problem. He really didn't want to catch the smoke but yeah right this was a relatively easy step. Once we had the container we had to take it to the transfusion facility and place it on the shelf where a canister was missing. Then in this next step we had to place telepads in certain locations one of these being placed near the power switch and the other being placed outside the prisoner holding cell. Then we needed to get an electric nova cool to zap this server box right here and then once he did that we had to pick it up take the teleporter and place it in the server rack. Now this took us a good few attempts as for some reason it always felt like we never had enough time but eventually after a very long time of trying we eventually managed to complete this step. After that whole faff we now had to get brain rot on our weapons and have zombies knock down paintings as each painting for some reason had a code behind it. So that's what we did alright we started off by taking the painting down in the beds area this gave us the code 6386. The second painting we took down was in the lounge area and this gave us the code 5527 and then the final painting we had to take down was in the greenhouse and this code was 3148. With all three codes acquired we once again inputted them into Rushmore in order to gain his trust and he was still being stubborn about it. Until conveniently a threat to Rushmore's life occurred with the power around the map turning off. I, I wonder how that happened. Anyways, to gain Rushmore's trust once and for all, we needed to turn switches around the map in a certain way. And to save a massive explanation, here's a picture of all the switches and which direction they need to be pointed in. So, once we had done all of that, we just needed to return back to the power switch and turn it back on. We were now onto the final steps of this easter egg before the boss fight, and honestly, this is actually quite a short easter egg. For some reason, I thought this easter egg would be longer, but either way, now we had to run around the map looking for mannequins that had blue smoke coming out of them. Once we found the mannequin, we had to interact with it, and this would begin a short lockdown sequence. Our first mannequin was located in the greenhouse backyard, and after completing in the lockdown we picked up the mannequin piece that it left behind. We proceeded to do this for two more mannequins, these being located in the lounge area and the other being located in the prisoner holding area. With all three parts of the mannequin obtained we went back to the mannequin near the APD and repaired him using the parts we had gathered. Now we were actually onto the final step before the boss fight. All we had to do was look around the map for a blue orb and once we had found him we just needed to lead him back to the mannequin we just repaired so we could fuse with it allowing him to talk. So that's what we did alright, we found the blue orb in the greenhouse backyard and after leading him to the mannequin we learned that it was our main man, the one and only Mr. GG man. Matt himself. Here he was in the flesh right he did make into the video. A round of applause. Once we had done this however we were now ready for the boss fight so without wasting any more time we went down to the APD control room and after interacting with this computer here the boss fight began. So for this boss fight we had to fight the Avogadro and now unlike Transit he is not messing around this time. There were so many points during this fight where we nearly got destroyed right and it was some actual squeaky bum time for sure. This boss fight is pretty much split into two stages. The first is that we had to run around the entire bunker filling up canisters with zombie souls while the Avogadro was on our ass. Now this becomes extremely annoying and high 
Harlow and the Avogadro can disable the canisters, calling it to no longer pick up souls, and he can sun us, meaning we can't defend ourselves at all. This caused us to have a few downs, but eventually we completed all of the canisters in the lounge, the diner, the storage, and then finally the beds. After doing this, we returned back to the computer where we started this boss fight, and now it was time for stage 2, defeating the Avogadro. Now this guy was a menace, alright, so I'm sure that we were going to have ourselves a big battle ahead of us. Lock him in a corner this time. Oh, yes sir, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean that was easy. So with that, we picked up the rock that came out of the APD and that marked the end of the Alpha Omega Easter egg. We completed this by the 8 hours and 43 minute mark, so it took us a little over an hour and 20 minutes to complete, which honestly really wasn't that bad for us. We were actually making really good time so far and 12 hours was clearly possible. If anything, we could maybe get 10 hours, but we'll have to see as we move on to our final map for this video. We were now onto our final map for this video, this being Tag the Totem. Now, this map's reputation is kind of similar to Alpha Omega, where most people think it's just a lazy map to end off the Aoife storyline, where some actually really enjoy it. And now, personally, I don't really have any feelings towards this map, as it's kind of just there. However, something to note is I've actually never beat this Easter egg up until this point, as the last time I tried it was back on PS4, and my game crashed before the ending cutscene. So, if we can beat this Easter egg in this video, this will be the first time I've actually beat this map properly. So, like usual, we got to work on turning on the power, and now the thing about this map is there's not one, not two, but three power switches around the map. So for now we just got to work on turning on the first two power switches, with the first one being located in the spawn room, and the second power switch is where the original power switch was in Call of the Dead. After we had turned on the power we then got to work on Pack-a-Punch. Now the way you do this is by coming down to this cave system here and meleeing this blue rock off the wall. Once we had the blue rock we simply had to take up the Pablo in the lighthouse and he would use that blue rock to melt the ice that the Pack-a-Punch was stuck in. Another thing we had to do before starting the easter egg was setting up the zip lines and obtaining the zip line handle. To set up the zip lines we first had to find two wheels somewhere on the ship and place these two wheels in two locations and after turning both the wheels completely this would set up all the zip lines. Then for us to get the zip line handle we just had to go with the Pablo in the lighthouse and him being the gentleman he is he would kindly spare us one of his zip line handles. This then allowed us to go up to the laboratory area and complete some more things that we had to do before we could actually start the easter egg. Once we made our way up to the laboratory we needed to find two key cards and place them in this machine near the entrance. This would activate the key cards and once we took them down into the main laboratory area we could insert them into the wall here and this would begin a mini lockdown step while the vault door opened. So once the door was opened it revealed us some for music box and this was actually extremely important for steps later on. So with everything out of the way, something we had actually been working towards was completing these two trials around the map. Basically there will be these armored dummies that would give us challenges like find soup ingredients or take PGRs down to the beach. And once we had completed two sets of the trials it would give us a reward and this would let us start the easter egg. So we finished up our second set of trials by the 9 hours and 15 minute mark and could actually start doing some easter egg steps. So for the first step of this easter egg we needed to go to where Juggernog was located in the original Call of the Dead but we will now find four dials. Now I think there's a way to find the code out naturally but just like we did in Blood of the Dead, we ended up just brute forcing the correct code as for some reason when you set it to the right number the dial makes a clicking sound. Now this just makes this step incredibly easy but one thing I did find out while doing this step is that if you fuck around you do in fact find out. So free but- oh. Okay so let's just move on from that. For this next step the keepers asked us to find offerings that would please them. Now we had to do this three times and the way you find out what item they're looking for is through a riddle. So our first item's riddle was where feet slip. Now obviously this was a reference to ice so it went down the ice slide while holding interact and this gave us our first sacrificial offering. Our second riddle was where bread breaks. Now this item was actually found in the salad bar back on the ship. So after picking that up, we now had two of the three items. The final riddle we had to solve was where lines birth. Now this one had us stumped, but after looking it up, we found out that this item was located near the zipline and spawn. So after going there, we picked it up and we now had all three sacrificial items. So with all of the items in hand, we were now tasked with finding a vessel or as it's called the seal of duality. So again, the location of this was given to us through a riddle and this time it was where cages hang. So what this meant was that it was in the boathouse. So after I made my way there, I knifed this picture off the wall and it revealed a safe. So after placing some dynamite we crafted by killing fire zombies with snowballs, this gave us a seal complete in this step. So we now had to go back to the room that was all red and shoot this orb that was floating around the device. After doing this it would cause a yellow orb to fly somewhere in the map and what we needed to do was find this yellow orb and throw a snowball at it. This would make it go back to where the red orb was and after throwing another snowball at it it would turn blue. Now we need to do this three times and keep in mind of this step because we're going to have to do it a few more times throughout this easter egg. But yeah I mean once we were done with that we were now on to the next step. This next step required us to go to this camp fire near the red room and place the device on top of it. After we had completed that we then needed to throw a Samantha box at it where a bunch of dialogue would happen finishing up that step immediately. Not really a step but more as like a little break for us. So once they stopped talking we now needed to go back to Pablo in the lighthouse where he will lower down these two stones. What we need to do is we need to place these stones in certain areas and activate traps. So the first trap we had to go to was just outside the boathouse and after placing the soapstone on the floor and activating the laser trap it would heat it up to about 9000 degrees but since I was playing as the Russie he could just pick this up with no problems at all. The next trap we needed to go to 
was the freeze trap up in the labs. So again, after placing the trap down and activating the trap, we now had a freezing cold stone. But again, Rusty's just invincible, so he just carries us around in his back pocket with no problems at all. With these stones, we now went down to the main part of the labs and placed them in the machine. And once we did that, we were able to pick up a fuse. Now, before we can go on to the next step, we needed to get ourselves a Wonder Wolf. We could have just gotten one from the box, but we decided to do the free Wonder Wolf quest instead. To do this, we need to find an icicle with a key inside it. And after taking it to the pot at the back of the ship, the icicle would melt, leaving just a key behind. We then took this key up to the lab to unlock this safe and inside the safe was the Vril device. We now needed to fill it up with souls and after we did that we picked it up and took it down to Pablo where in exchange he would give us another key. But this time we could use the key on the crate in the same room and this would give us a free Wonder Wolf. So now that we have the Wonder Wolf we need to shoot these electric boxes on these pylons and after shooting both boxes we now needed to go to these transformers and get free electric kills nearby. Now I won't lie this step really confuses as it seemed like no matter how many electric zombie kills we got nothing seemed to count. So we spent a good while trying to figure out what was going on until we realized we never put down the fuse near the metal door using the original called a dead easter egg and once we had placed down the fuse to open the door the elemental rock was just there meaning either we had completed this step or just skipped it entirely i don't really know but either way we were now at the next step now just like before we needed to repeat that red orb step so after finding all the orbs and throwing snowballs at them we now needed to go back to the campfire place the device down and throw a samantha box at it triggering more dialogue after picking up the device we now needed to take it over the pablo where he'd begin to repair it and now while he was doing that we had to do a lockdown sequence now this did get a little bit squeaky but with the helion salvo it wasn't really that bad so once Pablo lowered the device, the lockdown ended and that was the end of that step. After picking up the device, we now needed to take it to each Pack-A-Punch location and Pack-A-Punch the device. Each time we Pack-A-Punched it, we had to do a little defense stage, but like I already said, the Helion Salvo made the step a cakewalk and we had Pack-A-Punched the device in all four locations by the 10 hours and 4 minute mark. Now, all we had to do was go back to the Red Orb room. After throwing some more snowballs at the orb circulating it, for the final time, we had to place the device on the campfire. After throwing a Samantha box, we were now pretty much at the end of the Easter egg. Once they stopped talking, we now needed to go to the Golden Pack-A-Punch machine and do one final lockdown before the escort step. So, I mean, that's what we did, alright? We took the flinger over to the golden Pack-a-Punch machine and we filled the Pack-a-Punch with some souls and eventually the entire world went red and the water turned into lava. And now we're on to the hardest part of this easter egg. So basically for this step we need to follow the device all the way back up to the labs and you need to stay in this circle while the game throws every zombie in the universe at you. It can get really difficult but don't worry, alright? I had my priorities in check. Give me that 300 points, come on, you know I gotta do it. But yeah, right, this was actually quite the challenge, but luckily the Helion Salvo and the Thunder Gun I got came in extremely handy. But then eventually we made our way over to the laboratory, and this was the last stop for the device, and instead of it just being a wait for it to finish, the circle began to close in on itself, making it extremely cramped and hard to survive in. We used everything we had from the Helion Salvo to the Thunder Gun to even the Samantha boxes to survive. It was tough, but... It was done. We had pretty much completed the Tag the Totem Easter egg. All we had to do now was take the device back to Pablo up in the lighthouse and after a cutscene had been floating into the air, we went to the sun deck on the boat and interacted with the yellow orb to finish up the final map for this video and proving that yes, you can in fact beat every Black Ops 4 Easter egg in 12 hours. So, for some final thoughts. I went into this video absolutely dreading these easter eggs as I had not had a good experience during my PlayStation days, but after going back through playing and beating all maps on PC, I found a new appreciation for what Black Ops 4 is and some of the maps I genuinely really enjoyed like Dead of the Night. It is genuinely a little bit upsetting that we didn't beat it in 10 hours, we were literally 20 minutes over, but maybe that's a video for another day, who knows. So with all of that, this video is coming to a close. Firstly, I just want to thank Tyler for learning and helping me beat all of these easter eggs. I genuinely don't think I would have been able to do this solo, so I genuinely really appreciate it. I also really appreciate everyone who supported the channel and I'm sorry this video took so long to come out. I was always really worried that it wouldn't live up to your guys' expectations but I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. The script for this video was longer than the every easter egg in 24 hours video coming in at nearly 16,000 words and 23 pages. So all I ask is that you guys leave a like and subscribe to the channel I'd really appreciate that and yeah I mean other than that I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.